Okay. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome uh, again. Uh, my name is Jesse Wilson. I'm a Citrix certified instructor. Woo! Big title. Um, I'm not a Citrix employee, which means I'm not here to sell you stuff. I have technically Friday. People fired me because my contract will be over for this week, so I'll not be a GTC employee. Uh, I spend my days, my weeks, teaching and consulting on Citrix products. So one of the things we're here to do today is literally talk about just what does the calendar offer, um, and specifically what GTC can do for you in this area uh, when it comes to these Citrix products. Now, if you have spent time looking at the Citrix website and trying to figure out what training class you should take, uh, you will understand it is less than easy to utilize and less than easy to understand, depending on your version of Zen App, depending on your version of Zen Desktop depending on if you understand what I just said was Zen App and Zen Desktop, can really change um, what type of course you, you should be taking. Citrix changing their verbiage. Um, is, it, it's, is it Zen App? Is it Zen Desktop? Does Zen App exist anymore? Is it um, a Citrix Access Gateway? Is it a Netscaler Gateway? Is it CloudBridge? Is it Branch Repeater? All these terms keep changing, which makes it very difficult to do something as basic as find out what course you should be in. Uh, this is just going to be a pretty quick overview on the courses Citrix offers that we can run through GTC. And the biggest thing I'm going to tell you is, if this is still not enough, we're going to have a Q&A after, please ask. But the one reason I love being down here at GTC as much as I'm saying it in front of Keith, and you might not believe me because owner's sitting right there, but I love being here because their employees actually put the time in and understand what these classes are. And the comment I just told Keith in that room is, I have been in a lot of places where I have had the wrong students in the wrong class. Um, you're taking an advanced Netscaler course and you don't know what Netscaler is, you're in the wrong class. Uh, you're taking a basic Zen App administration course and you've been a Zen App administrator for 15 years. Chances are you're in the wrong class. They do a great job of qualifying you based on what hardware you have, what builds you're doing, where your company is going to go, and where you need to go as an individual, not just as a company. So please, by all means, if you have more questions, do not be afraid to pick up the phone and talk to these people. They actually know what they're talking about. It's crazy to hear a salesperson actually know what they're saying. Um, I can tell you the ones here do, uh, which is why these two are kind of in the right class this week. Tony's not sure if he is anymore. but um, Literally, we're going to walk through. Can you get in focus on that slide for me? Click on it. Never, never. Yeah, he promised. I don't know if I trust him. Anyways, um, Citrix has a couple of different ways you can take courses. Okay, they have what are called ILTs, VLTs, and SPOs. ILTs are the best thing Citrix offers. Why? Because that's what I teach. Um, these are the ones where an instructor is standing in front of you. And we are talking, and I'm here. We're face-to-face. -face, we high-five. GCC brings you lunch every day. It's not a bad gig. Yeah, I'm telling you. See, better. once a week, guys, you can get it every day. Okay, if you're here for the free food, I might have just sold you on the class. All right. Um, the VLTs, what is this? You are too lazy to drive here. You want to take the classroom home. Um, your boss will not let you leave work, so you are going to try to barricade yourself in your cubicle. Uh, you can do this. Remote in using GoToMeeting, and you can take the course looking at slides and talking through some other pieces. What the SPOs are are some recordings. These are self-paced online. GTC can hook you up with some information on these, and these are much more condensed. Um, I generally tend to get about one to two students a month who bought an SPO and then returned it. These are very condensed versions, and unless GTC recommends this to you, I wouldn't recommend doing it, but it's your call. Okay, these are self-paced online courses, no instructor interaction. Uh, this is a study as you go. So when we're talking about why we would want to pursue our Citrix certification, our Citrix education, the Citrix product is really, really changing. Does anybody know what just happened with the Zen Desktop 7 product this year? What changed? Yeah. Ooh, you've been reading the blogs in the last couple of days I'm not supposed to talk about. Um, officially, Zen App and Zen Desktop are one product. Until about three days ago when someone at a meeting in, I think it was Japan or someone overseas, did not read the first slide that said non-disclosure agreement, and they tweeted out, ah, they just launched Zen App 7.5. Now, Zen App 7.5 is being split out, which means there will be more classes following, including a brand new Netscaler course I just learned about last night. So one of the courses I'm going to tell you about now, I just learned is going to be retired in about six months. So this product is forever evolving, ever changing. Um, I have more books than I care to know about and have to learn more classes than I can uh, really remember because we are going all the way to 7.5. I still have students on environments 4.0, 4.5, 5.0. Those courses are still available under the legacy, under the legacy 
um, education offerings. So if you need a legacy course, we can do it. There are a lot of changes in the products from the underlying operating system, or we're using 2K at R2, 2K12, back to 2K5, whatever it would be, um, to really understanding even something as simple as a licensing model, which is now changing with the new XT7 product. Yeah, I'm getting smiles from, from our GCC people who love the fact that Citrix is deciding to change with their licensing model. But these are some of the reasons beyond just getting the hands-on experience and skills to be able to sit down and take these courses. Um, has anybody here ever sat a Citrix course? Oh, you too, F. Wonderful. Um, what do you think of it? Be honest. I'm not asking you two because I'm here. Good. So what what'd you do? Ooh, labs. Yeah, that's pretty much what we do. We do lectures and labs. What are the labs? The lab busy work. Um, the labs give you the chance to play around with an environment that you can break and not feel bad about, um, not get fired because of no resume generating events, no thank you, um, that you can feel free to make mistakes in get some actual hands-on experience. These two gentlemen sitting in front of me now can put on the resume that they have successfully managed a Zen server, Zen app, and Zen server, Zen desktop deployment. New, new hires don't, don't need to know that was a week in a, in a lab, and that's fine, but it gives you some experience on components. If you're a VMware shop, I'm supposed to trash them, right? I'm wearing a Citrix shirt. VMware's a great product. If you're a VMware shop, you've never touched Zen server, course is always on Zen server. Why? Because it's a Citrix product. I'm not going to put VMware on it. Um, but it gives you the chance to experience that. So understanding exactly what course you should be at to get the hands-on experience of those labs that match the environment you currently have, or match the environment you're going to have, or match the environment you wish you could have, <laughs> um, can really help you make some of those decisions on should we go this far? Did we make the right installation? What is a Citrix best practice? What should I change? So when we're going through the different classes, we look at the mainstay Citrix, pro Citrix products that we teach. ZenApp. Who's know what ZenApp is? His first hand. I'm going to keep going to it. Why did I raise it? Virtual apps. There we go. ZenApp. Application delivery. What's Zen Desktop? I know it's tough. Oh my gosh. Desktop delivery. There we go. In Zen Desktop 7, they are one and the same. Products are merged. Okay, so ZenApp, Zen Desktop. What is Zen Server? There's our hypervisor. Okay, Citrix is hypervisor, a close second to VMware, depending on who you talk to, maybe a distant second. Um, but it's Citrix is offering for the hypervisor. We have combo classes. What do these do? Well, we're teaching one this week. It's called the CMD 207. We take five days of Zen app and five days of Zen desktop and squish it into five days total. It's fun. I speak about twice as fast as I am right now. Um, and we really, really get a lot covered. They call this a boot camp. Okay, there's other combo courses that deal with virtualizing your entire environment, the CVE courses, where you basically get a lab book that has about four pages in it. We say, great, let's build an environment. Okay, some of the most advanced certification courses Citrix offers. Netscaler, who knows what Netscaler is? Besides the bomb diggity. Yeah, I said bomb diggity. In a webinar, in a training, I said bomb diggity. Okay, what, what is a Netscaler? Bunch of things. GSLB appliance, so like global, global server load balancing. Um, Citrix's new licensing model. This is now your Citrix access gateway. Why? Because it's now the Netscaler gateway. All it does is control some of the basic access into your environment. This is your front end appliance. Okay, Google, Yahoo, I'll use it. F5, okay, main competition. Netscaler courses are fun. We have two of them currently. Um, the Netscaler is a beast, mile wide and an inch deep. What is branch repeater? WAN optimization. It was. Now it's called CloudBridge, and it's still WAN optimization, but it's the same thing. Okay, figuring out a way to make our WAN act like our LAN. Why would we want that? Because not all of us work in the same room. All of us work in the same building. We have branch offices. So being able to optimize those connections are huge. The last one is the newest, and this is Zen Mobile. Anybody know what Zen Mobile is? It's the mobile version of Zen. No. <laughs> well, kind of. What is Zen Mobile? Mobile device management, there we go. This is Citrix's new um, feather in their cap that they're trying to push out. Why? Because who doesn't have an iPad? Who doesn't have a tablet? Who doesn't have a phone that you can pull up your um, desktop on? What Citrix is doing with Zen Mobile is giving the ability to actually have that be useful. Versus, look, I can see my desktop. Isn't that cool? Great, I'll put it back in my pocket. No, we want to be able to utilize this. Zen Mobile is incorporating a virtual solution for all of your mobile computing devices. So. Let's actually go through the classes. Yeah. So 
talk to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Almost, almost all of them are. The cell pace will be a little bit, little bit less expensive, um, and you can see all the pricing on Citrix.com slash GTC's website. We'll have all that stuff for you. Um, I'll let you know Citrix.com will be retail. GTC will, will be around that. All these classes, besides the one we're taking this week on the second slide, it says this is not prepare. This is not to prepare you for certification. All these courses are designed to prepare you for a certification. Currently, it does not include a test voucher, but they, but basically, sitting this course and doing some basic study after, you will be able to pass the test. No, it is not VMware. Um, and again, it's not a shot of VMware, but to sit a VMware exam, you have to sit the the class. Citrix does not do that. You can sit the exam. Go pay your 150 bucks in a Pearson View Testing Center. Go sit your test. These classes are designed as environment prep and test prep both. So, good questions. CXA 206, what is this? This is your administration on your Zenap 6.5 environment. Um, anybody running a Zenap 6.0 environment? That class does not exist anymore. Okay, it's been incorporated in the 6.5 product. There are plenty of patches and install paths to upgrade from 6.0 to 6.5, but this will encompass it. This goes over everything in the environment. We ran this class in two and a half days this week. Um, it is a cradle to grave deployment. Everything from installing your license server to monitoring your full environment. It still uses web interface. For those of us not aware, what's going to happen to web interface in about end of this year? It's supposed to be 2015 for final. What's happening to it? It's going away. It's being drug out and shot. Anybody know why? You two don't get to tell. Storefronts a replacement. Why did Citrix have to build it? Literally, 2015, you will not be able to use web interface. It will not be fully functional. <coughs> Even simpler, it's, they're, 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 that is part of the functionality that's not going to be working as well. Microsoft is officially retiring J Sharp. They will no longer be including that in their coding. Guess what web interface is built on? So Citrix is getting rid of web interface. They have a very viable solution, which is storefront. Storefront is not covered in the 6.5 class. It is not on the 6.5 exam. This is still on web interface. We don't talk about storefront at all, except to bring up the fact that it's changing. Web interface is still currently a very viable solution, but going into the next year, next couple of years, it will not be anymore. The CXA301, Advanced Administration. This is another five-day course, and what do we deal with? Your environment is already built. This is not an install course. The entire five-day CXA 206 we cover in a four-hour lecture recap on Monday. Why? Because we walk through all the install, the licensing, everything we should know, and we do it in a troubleshooting manner. Now we have to manage our environment. How do we do that? How do we troubleshoot? How do we do proactive monitoring? How do we do triage? How do I identify a single point of failure and mitigate it? Didn't say duplicate it, because you might not have the budget that Tony has. Um, <laughs> But how do we, I'm going to bring you in a couple of times. How do we mitigate a single point of failure? How do we identify how long we're going to be down if certain things do fail? We don't have the budget, space, resources to fully duplicate everything. We run through all the aspects of managing this environment to a much deeper dive into edge site, to the fact that you get to configure on a Netscaler VPX. And when you ask me Netscaler questions, I'm supposed to tell you it's not a Netscaler class. Um, you get to see a lot of the more advanced options in configuring the 6.5 product. Again, still uses web interface, does not use storefront, and is based on the 6.5, not the 7 product. The CXA201, ooh, this is part of that legacy piece. Okay, Citrix sent up 5.0 for Windows Server 2K8. 5.0 is still out there. It is still utilized. Anybody know why 5.0 is out there and still utilized? Compatible 2003, it's also compatible with 16-bit apps. Who in the world is using 16-bit apps? You would be surprised. Um, the CXA, excuse me, the Zenith 6.5 in the 206 course, 64-bit only. 2K at R2, only operating system you can install it on. That means 16-bit from here on out. If you can't port it to 32, it stays on 5.0. Some companies will be running multiple farms. Okay, so this course is still here. We still have the CXA 300. What is that? Advanced administration for the same piece. These courses will mirror what these two do just based on a different version of Zen. Is a 4.5 course still available? Kind of. Call GTC. Is a 4.0 course still available? Kind of. Call GTC. 
If you need the training, they can make it happen. Okay, that's what they're there for. Any questions on Zen app? Currently, question is storefront in any of the classes? No. Right now in the Zen app only storefront is not. But I'm gonna get to the ones on the 7 0 product that do include it. Do I see that changing? Yeah, in the next six months, I don't see 6.5 completely going away again. I know about as much about the 7.5 product as you do. I've seen one tech article so far. Um, I've seen nothing to deal with training to courseware or any real, any active environment. And I've seen four or five things on Twitter that shouldn't have been posted, according to Citrix saying, shh. Um, so the 7.5 product sounds like it will replace the 6.5. I honestly right now do not know. If the 7.5 doesn't, you will see this incorporate storefront. If the 7.5 does, this will probably stick a web interface, and the, this will become the CXA207, um, depending on the normal trend Citrix has with developing their training. Any questions on just our Zen app piece? Sweet. Zen desktop. We start off with the class that we're actually in right now, the second half of that combo, the CXD202. This is a class on Zen desktop 5, not Zen desktop 5.5 5 or 5.6 but Zen Desktop 5. There is no course offering for 5.5 or 5.6. In the full five-day course, we spend one module going through the addendum, which are all the additional components that go from a 5.0 environment to the 5.5. My hope is Citrix will upgrade this. I do not know. Currently, this is the class that walks you through doing a full Zen Desktop deployment. We cover everything, including machine creation services. We're going to cover some basic pieces in our branch repeater. We cover something called PVS. Who knows what PVS is? Provisioning service. Streaming with Lance Armstrong. It's on steroids. Ah, you like ah. Um, make streaming a whole lot better. Okay, it's a beast. It is one of the biggest compatibility pieces Citrix has evolved with, and it's one of the biggest reasons they maintain they still maintain such a large market share. Is the ability to stream out desktops, stream out full server images from a single image. Tony, how many servers do you have? No, not at home, at work. Back at work? At work. Yeah, 220 from how many images? One image, 220 servers. How many do you have to patch? One. He's not a plant, I promise. He's here for a reason. He's in the class. 220 server images and we're upgrading one. This is what PVS can do. Um, you walk through a full MCS deployment after doing your VDI in a box on Monday. You walk through a full MCS machine creation services deployment. You build your desktops. You build your catalogs. We troubleshoot that, then walk through a full PVS deployment. Build your desktops, build your shared images, and discuss what are the use cases per user, what are the use cases per desktop, and how we can match up those models, how we can match up your company model. Are we going to do all pooled desktops? Are we going to do all streamed? Or two pooled, two streamed, this image here, that image there? Provisioning services. Mm -hmm. This is where you're going to hear Citrix marketing term a lot called FlexCast. In fact, in the new DIN Desktop 7 product, they make the new FMA, FlexCast Management Architecture, replaces the IMA, Independent Management Architecture. What is FlexCast? It's marketing. But what the real term is, is how do I get a desktop to my end user? Well, you give it to them. How? Well, if my end user is in the office, I'll give it one way. In the office on a rich client, I can stream it there. How about in the office on a thin client? Oh, I can host it on my server. How about on the bench seat of a truck? How's their bandwidth? Terrible. Well, guess what? I'm going to have them stream in the office, and they can take it offline for 30 days for whatever offline license I want to give them. Lots of different ways to give the exact same end user the exact same desktop based on how they're coming in. This is one of the things we walk through in the Zen Desktop course. Now, CXD203, here's our new stuff. These are the three new course offerings for the monster Zen Desktop 7. Um, and this is also changing the certification path. We have all new certifications, the CCIE, CCA, CCI, all that stuff is changing and incorporating these courses strictly for apps and desktops. Why? Because you are no longer going to take a Zen app class and a Zen desktop course. You're no longer going to take one Zen app class and have basic. No. They are splitting it up into the management, the deployment, and the design. And according to Citrix, this is the order you should take them in. Starting with the 203, what is this managing? You do some basic installs. But the biggest piece is the day-to-day -day operations of the environment. This is where you should begin based on what your daily job is. I'm a server admin. I just build stuff. The management piece might not be huge for you. You know what? You might get a lot more out of the deployment because that's where we do the nuts to bolts install. We start from the ground up. 
building those Windows 2K12 servers, and then install on top of them. The management is there to do some of the basic troubleshooting. Look at the consoles. Where's App Center going? It's gone. It's dead. Where's Desktop Studio? It's still there, but now we just call it Studio. So we, we said it didn't change too much. We just dropped the desktop off the front. You're going to learn all the new terms. You're going to learn the new functionality. You're going to learn things about how the VDA, virtual delivery agent, not desktop agent, works now. Okay, you will learn how to manage your current deployment. Once you understand how to management, we're going to take a step back and go to the 300 and learn how to deploy it. This is the cradle to grave class where you will stand it up from nothing. This is much deeper than any other Citrix course has gone besides the CVE 401 and 500. Because we are not taking an environment that's pretty much built and joining this and doing that. No, you're taking nothing like you have in your environment. And beyond making you go actually rack mount stuff, <laughs> um, you are doing everything virtually, building new 2K12 servers. But it's Microsoft. I know. But we have to have that to install Citrix. So even though it's a Citrix class, we're going to talk about installing a Microsoft server. We've never done that. Okay, we've always said it's a Microsoft thing. Don't, don't talk about that. Take another class for that. You will build this from the ground up in the deploying piece. The last one is the design. What is this? Well, I know how to install it. I know how to manage it now. What should I install? What should I manage? Not just the product overall. What is your scope? What is your deployment? What is your company goal? What is your schema? What's your baseline? Individual user per server. Using a UCS chassis, using IBM legacy blades. What are we trying to do with this product? Are we focusing around the app delivery side? Because ZenApp is there. Are we focusing around the Zen desktop delivery side? Are we merging both? Are we going to be using PVS? Should we be using PVS? We will discuss storefront in all three of these classes. You'll do storefront implementations in all three of them. Again, the most advanced one being the 400 is really around why are we making this decision or these decisions for my environment? What am I installing? Where am I installing it? Where's my DR going to be? What's my DR solution going to be? How do I mitigate time between those? How can I use Storefront more effectively to bridge a gap between that? Where's Netscaler going to fit? It's not a Netscaler course, but again, that's one of the advanced solutions that can make your environment run much more better. That's a technical term. I still use it, Tom. Okay. You understanding this design piece being the most advanced piece is why we don't start there. In Citrix understanding, you should understand how to Manage the overall environment, then do the nuts to bolts install, then do the actual full um, design and schema. Citrus is trying to get more money out of you, right? Three classes instead of one. We can read this however we want. I'm happy I get to teach more stuff. But when we're looking at this, they are really taking a different approach to how they are releasing this product and trying to give a much better education. Also realize something. There is no more Zenep and Zen Desktop. So instead of going through and learning, I'm going to learn how to deploy Zen app, and I'm going to learn how to deploy Zen desktop, and we'll try to merge them, they are one and the same. There is no more app center. You manage your Zen app environment from Studio. You oversee your Zen app environment from Director. It used to be Desktop Director. Same thing. One of the reasons these three courses have to be three is there's a lot of information there now. Lots of different options. What questions do we have on the new one? any of the Zen desktop ones, but specifically the new XD7 courses. Someone's got a Zen app only environment. What product are they using? There is no such thing. And, and this is, I know, I know. And you're, you're dealing with customers calling all the time going, I'm using Zen app 7. No, you're not. You are using a functionality of Zen desktop 7, which is called Zen app. Um, currently, yes, this is it. Now, the 7.5 thing we're talking about, if you guys haven't seen the blogs, there's not a whole lot out there. Literally, I shouldn't. Sorry, should I cover the mic up now? I shouldn't be talking about it because I don't know anything. I know as much as you do. I'm not kidding. Um, I have no idea what the product is supposed to do. The rumor is, um, the discussion is, if you have an advanced license in 6.5, there is no upgrade path for you to go to 7.0. There is nothing. It's an uninstall, reinstall, start from scratch up. This 7.5 is supposed to give an upgrade path for people who are using just the Zen app product on the advanced but give a lot more full functionality. Citrix is breaking their promise. I know you're shocked. They've never done that. Okay, th this is the Microsoft putting the start button back in Windows 8 after they said no, no, no. Um, they merged the products and now they're realizing there is still a sector out there that really truly only needs ZenApp 7. Well, ZenApp 7 doesn't exist, so we're going to skip that and go to ZenApp 7.5.
that stuff will be evolving so much in the next month. So all your customers that you're talking, the rest of you are thinking about it, give it a couple of weeks. Literally, this announcement happened, I think, Tuesday, um, maybe Monday, and it was not supposed to. This was at an in-house um, Citrix partner discussion, and some people broke the NDA, and we'll probably get in trouble about it. So this is coming, but again, right now, current 7, whatever you want to call it, Zen Desktop, Zen App. These are the only courses for it. Now, it's still the best ones because this is managing. Whether you're running Zen Desktop or Zen App, where are you managing from in 7? Studio. Doesn't matter what product you're pushing, there's one console, Lord of the Rings, one ring to rule them all, one console to control everything. So they may get some extra edumacation about Zen Desktop. Technical term again, edumacation. Um, but this is the only way for them to get the full understanding of how to utilize the Zen App portion of the new product, either in a managing deployment or a design implementation. My name is Keith, and I am not a certified. I paid my money. They're not going to take it away. Is any other questions on the seven product? You'll have some later, and that's why your reps are here, especially that one sitting right back there. Mary's the one that when you call and talk to anything about training, she's the one that answers. So by all means, memorize the face because she's the one that will be helping you out with this stuff. Um, Zen Server. We have one class for Zen Server. Uno, that's it. This is the Zen Server 6.0 administration. Can anybody guess what version of Zen Server this teaches? I don't take your time. Don't rush into it. Think it through. Um, this is a 6.0 product. This is the one that deals specifically with the hypervisor. How many people in here are VMware shop? You'd never take this course. You still might. Um, you will be shocked. And I tell my two VMware admins up here, because they're both VMware shops. Uh, how different is Zen Server than VMware? Yeah, it's color coded different. The words are different. Instead of quick create, it's new, v, you know, new, new VM from template or whatever it would be. These are two very, very similar products. They are written from the same code. Citrix admits it, VMware won't. They are very different in performance wise, different in the wrapping paper. Um, depending on who you talk to, very different in performance. In my mind, it's a very Ford versus Chevy argument. Whatever you're used to driving, you're going to like more. Okay, VMware is a phenomenal product. Okay, do I think it's better than Zen Server? They didn't record that. Um, it does storage management, in my opinion, better. And again, this is coming from a teacher and a consultant. What does Citrix do better? Holy crud, it's so much cheaper. Okay, if you can't use the 5% of storage management, I think, that VMware has over Citrix, um, I don't know why you're spending the money. Citrix has changed the way that they're asking to deploy Zen Server. Right now, if you buy a Platinum Zen Desktop license, what do you get? Zen Server, why? They want you to use it. They want you to use it. So when it's Friday, 3.30, and you realize, oh my gosh, I need one more freaking server stood up. I'm out of VMware licenses. Am I going to get on the phone and pay $600 gazillion to get one more license on a Friday evening? Or wait a second, I have all these Zen, and Zen Server? Zen server licenses, Zen server, that's what it is. I have all these Zen server licenses. Why don't they just stand one up? You'll be shocked when you run them side by side. They no longer measure by market share. They measure by penetration. I don't care if you have 90 VMware servers, stand up one Zen server. Why? Because next year when you go to write that check again for VMware, you might have a much harder time writing it. Because that Zen server that was running ran just as terribly as the VMware ones do. We don't love it. Okay, either way, it always has problems. They all do. Okay, it, they are compatible in terms of the issues. It may surprise you. Now, again, are you going to be one to go to your company and say, let's not spend the money on this. Let's go spend this over here. Unless they're putting it in your pocket, probably not. But just be aware, um, Zen Server is a good, viable solution. Taking a course like this gives you that experience of learning about things like Zen Motion, being able to migrate between hosts, resource pools. How do I manage the hypervisor more efficiently? Okay, why does that matter? Because this is eating up, on average, 20% of your system resources between this and the windows on top of it. Okay, how can I manage my VMs? How can I integrate and make those resources much more stable? How can I have flexibility by using remote storage versus local? What if I do have a host failure? What do I do? How can I automate my system so I can go golfing? And I can have five servers completely blow up, and guess what? They all migrate over. All of this stuff we will walk through in the Zen Server class. 
understanding how to completely utilize something as basic as a thin layer of code that is there to separate the software from the hardware. If you understand how to utilize that correctly, okay, Peyton Manning makes millions of dollars throwing a piece of pigskin through the air. He understands how to utilize that correctly. If you understand how to utilize that thin layer of code correctly, it can change the way your environment performs and it can change how many golf games you have to walk away from because you're getting calls. Any questions on the Zen server piece? There's no questions, I'm telling you. That's okay. Ready, ready dance, I can dance a little bit too. That's all I got. That's it. Um, so our combo classes. Which ones are the I know that was that was me not dancing. That's as far as it went. Okay, combo classes. What is this? These are classes that include information of both ZenF and Zen Desktop. But Jesse, what about the XD? Um, there's no more ZenF in XD7. It is a Zen desktop with the functionality of ZenF. So what combo classes do we have? Starting with the one, the CHD100. What is this? How many of you complain about your help desk? I <laughs> hear laughter. <laughs> They're not a help desk. Um, how many of you have sent them to training? <laughs> then it's not their fault. You won't believe me, but yeah. Um, what does this do? This is a three-day course. Three days still? Yes, this is three. Three-day course that walks your help desk through to actually help. Ever had the Citrix, uh, ever had the help desk ticket Citrix is broken? Yeah, I've seen it. You laugh. I've seen it. Okay. We want a little bit more than that. We'll walk them through the troubleshooting methodology that Citrix has, that most of us as administrators know. You define the scope of the issue. Okay. You, you plan. You implement your plan. You document. Yeah, we always document, right? Every admin in here always document. Liars. Um, terrible documentation. Me too. But we walk through the seven-step methodology to diagnose an issue. And then we're going to give them some use cases. We're going to give them broken labs. Well, what do you mean? I mean, find out what's wrong. Yes, you follow the step-by-step, -step, but maybe they'll start to understand looking at the rector. Holy cow, I can actually use this thing. I can see all the VMs that are running. I can see what VMs are running at high CPU. So instead of giving my admin a ticket that says Citrix is broken, I can give an admin that says Citrix is broken, comma, not period. I have an end user that can't launch a desktop. We have licenses. I've checked desktop director, and it looks like we are out of desktops because four of them are not rebooting. They're showing high CPU and not responding to any pings. My guess is we have an antivirus that has locked up our VDAs, which is burning some of the high CPU and making it so that those desktops don't respond to anything internally, externally. Yeah, when you get that ticket, email it to me. Um, but you can at least get them to do some of the basic diagnostics. How many of you like calling end users? What, no hands? I'm shocked. If your help desk does their job correctly, you really shouldn't have to because they should be giving you the right information. What type? We go through questions. Sounds remedial. Sounds basic. How many times have you described your help desk as remedial or basic? I've met plenty of phenomenal help desks that just did not have training. How many of your help desks have complete completion percentages? A lot of them do. We need to solve 80% of tickets to get our bonus. Guess what? Citrix is a get out of jail free card. We don't include that in our completion percentage. Why? I'm not Citrix certified. Eh, add it in. Three-day class, very good for the help desk. Honestly, very good for a newer administrator who hasn't done a lot of troubleshooting in Citrix. This will be based on the Zen 6.5 product and the Zen Desktop 5.0 product does not include XD7. Is there one coming? Yes. When will it be here? I have no clue. Okay, but it will come. CMB 207. This is what we're doing here at GTC this week. This is a way to not have to buy two classes, but you buy one. Just means you have to stay awake for most of it, Mark. Not all of it. I know. You got to get a little sleep. Um, caffeine. What are we doing? We're walking through Zen F65, the CXA 206 and the CXD202, the Zen Desktop 5.0 product. We do them in two separate courses. Wednesday at lunch, we flip the book over and I reintroduce myself to my students. I actually did. They found it funny because it's a brand new class. You will learn a full deployment of Zen app, a full deployment of Zen Desktop, and get interactive labs in both areas. What is the point of this? Not to get you ready for certification because we cover way too much stuff. I don't have the time to grill in some of the memories. I don't have the time to walk through a lot of the scenarios on the exam. But this is, hey, we're about or thinking about going to this thing called Citrix. I know nothing about it. Or we're upgrading from a 4.0, 4.5 environment. Okay, we don't know if we're going to use Zen Desktop, but we think we wanted to try it. Or I just became a Citrix admin. Why? Citrix through osmosis. The old Citrix admin was next door to me, and they quit. Go through the wall. Uh, you're a Citrix admin. Okay. This course gives you a great overview of everything. 
And what's really nice is it gives you two of these books. Well, one was really, really big. This coursework ain't cheap. Okay, and if you can only get away from work for a week, this is a great option. This one GTC runs a lot. Below it, we have the more advanced certification, CVE 401 and the CVA 500. These have lab books and have workbooks that are yay, yay big. And these are group discussion models. They're kind of fun. Okay, this is made for um, someone who has a good grasp and good understanding of what Citrix is, what ZenApp is. Currently, they do not include the seven product, but most classes I've been involved in, we evolved there, at least lately, because these are wide open. We get given a scenario, and as a group, we discuss how we're going to implement it. We pretend we're working for a company, and we're all getting paid to consult. What does this do? In the 401 product, which is engineering a virtual solution, we actually go in and do a build. Okay, we need to solve 100 users doing this, this, this. These are our constraints. How do the classes turn out? Everyone turns out a little different. There's no one solution. That's one of the beauties about Citrix's product. There's no one solution. The 500 course. This one is made for someone who has no experience being a project manager or a sum but wants to get better at it. Because this is not just the build. This is how do I lead a team doing the build? How do I understand the concepts of that? Even points to some of the financials, not what they would be, but how you can control, how you can investigate, and how you can go. This is for actually architecting a full deployment. You're leading five people, you're leading two people, um, and don't have a whole lot of experience with that aspect of it. This is a phenomenal course to take as long as you have a good understanding of the three main products, Zen Apps, Zen Desktop, and Zen Server. 6.5 for Zen App, 5.0 for Zen Desktop, and 6.0 for Zen Server, and that's currently. Great classes, much more advanced. How do you know if you qualify for these? This is where you pick up the phone and you call one of your reps at GTC. Because we do not want you in the wrong course. I don't want you to look at me and roll your eyes. I know it's IMA. Stop saying it. Well, yeah, I know it's 5.0, but I'm taking the 7 product. And I don't want you doing this the whole time. What in the world did he just say? Okay, in that 401 class, if you're not familiar with the product, I see this all week. And on Tuesday, I usually come up and say, we need to go have a chat. Why? Because we're going to get you in a different course. Please do not be afraid to pick up the phone and call your GTC reps and talk about this. Now, the one outside the scope of the strict virtualization is the networking piece. Who here uses Netscaler? Who here is a Netscaler guru? Hands went down. What just happened? Um, Netscaler is a beast. I love it. Um, I teach both the classes, and I still get surprised by stuff. When I'm consulting, even in the classes, what are you doing? And that works? Ooh, show me. It is a phenomenal product. What does it do? It does everything. It is, mind, um, it is mainstay known for GSLB, global server load balancing, site to site. What can it also do? Well, now that the CAG is being retired, Citrix Access Gateway, kind of, it's being renamed to the Netscaler Gateway. You are installing a Netscaler and licensing, licensing it for nothing but a gateway feature. So you'll get to see all these grayed out boxes, and then it's going to say Netscaler Gateway. What does that mean? Citrix is moving to a model. It's called scale up, scale out, scale in. It's what they do with their Netscaler. The scale in part means if you want to go from a CAG, you want to go from a Netscaler gateway to a fully functional Netscaler, you swap a license. That's it. No rebuilds, nothing else. You swap a license and get more functionality. Understanding how to deploy Netscaler. The CXA, excuse me, CNS 205 is a Netscaler 10 Essentials in Networking. This will walk you through a Netscaler deployment. This will walk you through all what is on the back of that little machine, those little ports. Okay, why there's two plugs, it's two power in case one fails. We talk about the MDX. Okay, if we can have a physical Netscaler. We talk about a virtual Netscaler, how many virtual instances of a Netscaler we can stand up. You can have 30 side by side on a one-year rack mount appliance. If you're Google, you might want that. Okay, we talk about limitations of each product. We'll pull up actually from Citrix.com outside the book, the design schematic for each serial number of model. Why? Because if you've already bought one, we'll talk about what you have. Most of them have the scale up, scale out, scale in model, meaning you've bought a particular piece of hardware, uh, you can simply swap the license and get double the throughput. Citrix is trying to give you flexibility. Why? Because if you want a 9.5 net scaler, you are at a brick wall. It cannot be upgraded to 10. You are stuck with 9.5. Is there any more 9.5 class? No. Is 9.5 still a viable solution? Yeah, it's still pretty darn good. It's a Netscaler. And you paid a lot of money for it because it's a one-year rack mount appliance. Yeah, you're not getting rid of that for the two or four or six that you have. 
you have crazy budgets, Tony. Um, this is a great course for this. Now, the CNS-206, my recommendation, do not sit this until you sat the 205 or until you feel like I know what the heck I'm doing on a Netscaler, not I survived a Netscaler installation. And all I got was a stupid t-shirt. Oh, we should make that. Um, what this is, is this is implementing and inter intertwining this into a ZenApp and Zen desktop deployment. Well, why? Because now we can choose different ZenApp farms to point it to. We can do internal versions of GSLB. We can do the URL rewrites. We can do header inserts based upon what end users coming in, what version of a certain application we want them to have, what server we want to push them to. Not just location, but internally. What farm, what zone. How do I manage my ZenApp and Zen desktop environment better by intertwining Netscaler to it? And this course is the one that's going away. This will be replaced by something brand new called the CNS 207. Um, we just heard about, which will incorporate the new 7.5 product. When is this coming? Don't know. I would say this will probably be up till the end of the year. Um, and again, this is still on the Zen Server 6.0, Zen App 6.5, and Zen Desktop 5.0. Yeah, this one is still 5.0. It's not 5.5. If you are not familiar with Netscaler, be very aware of something. If you are a Citrix admin, these Netscalers come with a Citrix logo on them, which means when your networking team gets tired of dealing with them, they'll be pushed on your plate. If you are not a networking guru, that's okay. To integrate with a Netscaler, you've got to be some type of a networking something. Understand how it works. The 205 class will teach you that. The 206 class will take that information and let you intertwine it into your Citrix environment. We have a lot of different courses really gauged around how can we help you not just get certification. Citrix certification is not terrible. Guys, what's the percentage you need to get on the ZenApp test? 61%. You need a D minus. Zen desktop's a lot harder. You need a 63%. Study for that one. Okay, do your best. Um, even the new seven products, I think you need like a 64 and 65. For me to teach it, I have to get an 80. I need a B, B minus. I know, I'm not telling you what I got. Um, the certification piece is nice to have, but mainstay, these courses are here to really support you at your job. One of the biggest reasons I will push people away from the SPOs, um, of course, I teach them, blah, 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 I'm going to want, being in class, being online, and being able to interact, being able to discuss things, not just read things out of a book, being able to be wrong is a good thing. Be wrong here. Don't be wrong wherever that thing says at the bottom of your name tag. Being able to work through these solutions, being able to do it with a company that can provide you consulting, can provide you implementation. I've been in this room at a Netscaler course where someone just goes, I'm done. What do you mean? Walks outside, goes, hey, <laughs> who wants to install my Netscaler for me? Because I'm done. <laughs> Not a bad thing. It's okay. That's why GTC is here. That's why they provide training. It's to help the customers they already have. This is the full course offering besides the new stuff. Oh, I forgot the CloudBridge one. Never mind. Okay, we have the Branch Repeater. This one, um, the name online still says Branch Repeater, depending on when you look at it. It said CloudBridge two days ago, now it's Branch Repeater. What is this? A five-day course that teaches you all about multi-threading. What is multi-threading? How many channels are inside of ICA? 14. Michael Jordan backwards. 32. That's how I remember everything. I have really stupid things for it. 32 virtual channels in ICA. Why is it so, why is it so much more efficient than RDP? How many virtual channels in RDP? Michael Jordan backwards plus 98. <laughs> Minus 2. 128. It's like, really? You've got to write that down? Um, 128 virtual channels in RDP. You need a host this big with that, with Citrix this big. How many virtual channels are actually being used during a normal communication? You take a hose and you put 32 straws in it. Okay, one for video, one for audio, one for keyboard input, one for mouse input. All these different channels utilize for different things. So multi-threading is, is it takes those 30 channels that aren't being used because you don't allow microphone input because you're not doing VoIP or any video chat. And it says, we're going to send four of them for printing. Why? Because Branch Repeater just realized that we got a request for a huge print shop. 
Branch repeater is crazy, aka CloudBridge is crazy. Why? Because when you turn it on in your environment and you wait two or three months, it gets smarter. Skynet. It learns. That's creepy. Um, it will learn and optimize your environment the better the longer it's plugged in. It gets to know your traffic patterns. And it knows, hey, we do heavy printing at 3.30. Why? Because everybody goes home at 4. So I know at 3.30 I want to automatically open up four channels for printing and shut down two of them for video because our video happens all from 12 to 2. It starts to learn your patterns of traffic and starts to optimize traffic more effectively. What type of compression do you get using this? Uber. It's like 400 times compression for all your Citrix traffic. What is Riverbed? Riverbed is the competition. Very good product. It does half the compression. So Citrix is better. Depends. Citrix, CloudBridge, Branch Repeater, whatever you want to call it, compresses all of your Citrix traffic. Can we hack it and make it all TCP? I'm not going to talk about that. Um, but it'll do all your Citrix traffic. What does Riverbed do? All your WAN traffic. More widespread. So again, do you need this class? Do you need Branch Repeater functionality? If you have a Platinum license, you get this. The reason this course has gotten a lot more traction in the last year is Citrix finally made it so you didn't have to buy a one U rack mount appliance. You used to have to buy a repeater appliance you put in your data center, one U rack mount hardware appliance. And after six months, you got to get a new one, right? We have to upgrade stuff every six months or so. Why? Because there's a new number on the front. Now you can do a VPX version there and in, your, um, in all of your branch offices. If you're having WAN issues, if you're having any communication issues, this can truly change the way your environment runs. This is multi-threading on steroids. Okay, and it does it all automatically for you, so you're not opening stuff up and trying to edit it yourself. And it learns, it's cognitive, it keeps going, it gets better and better and better. This course will walk you through understanding the appliance, understanding the GUI, understanding your traffic patterns, and how to optimize all that. Understanding who from your branch office should be allowed to connect to this. Your secretary updating a calendar or all your registers, because you guys are a retail establishment. Oh, let's do the registers, because that's going to optimize the most traffic. How many branch repeaters do we need? We've got 3,000 um, stores connecting to one data center. You'll probably need more than one. This is a five-day, again, cradle-to-grave deployment of how we optimize our WAN traffic. I don't really need that. If you do, this class can save a lot of headaches, a lot of cable running. Great class with this. Now, the last two are our newer, are our newer ones. This is Citrix's new push for this year. They have a new focus. It's, of course, on the new Zen Desktop 7 product, but this is Zen Mobile. What is Zen Mobile? It's mobile versions of Zen. Okay, starting with the bottom, look at the two-day course, the CXM301, Deploying Zen Mobile and Managing Devices. What am I doing here? We're going to teach you how to integrate Zen Mobile in your current environment, and you're going to deploy it. And then leave. That's why it's only two days. I don't know how to install this, and I kind of want to know what to look at. This is meant to be a quick intro. That's why, again, it's two days. This isn't going to be a full Zen app, full Zen desktop, full solution-wise. This is going to be how do I install it correctly, how do I tie it into my current devices. What the CXM302 is, is just what it says. Designing, deploying, and managing all of our mobile solutions. We're not just going to talk about the install, we will, but what are your devices? How do I manage those devices correctly? How do I make sure my iPads connect in and go to the right place and get the right screen resolution? And how do I make sure my Asus tablets come in and do this? And my iPhones do this, and my Blackberries. Anybody have a Blackberry anymore? My Blackberries do this. Okay, my Razor flip phones are 40 years old, so they shouldn't be coming in. But it teaches you how to manage every single device in your environment and how to integrate that into the current deployment scheme you have. No longer are we saying, look, I get my desktop on my iPads. Isn't that cool? Shut it down. It's not just about showing anymore. It's not hype. This is actual functional real use cases. You can actually do something with an image because it's no longer a Zen desktop image. It is a Zen mobile image. Converting your environment for your mobile devices. Huge. Should have been out last year. Citrix are working on it. This is a big, big one for a lot of companies and a great one to walk through. Citrix has a lot of different courses. I think you should take them all. But why was that funny? Understanding really what your needs are, understanding what your company's needs are, realizing when you sit a Citrix course, you get a course completion certificate. Whose name is on that certificate? If you type it correctly, it's yours. 
um, your company is going to show that they invested money into you training. So whether you're going for promotion internally or externally, okay, you're looking for a job somewhere else or in the same one, you're getting proof that not only did you pass the certification, because we could go find a brain dump and study something and memorize it and try to get a cert, but the company you're currently with invested an amount of money in training you, and hopefully you showed up and stayed awake for the class, at least enough to get a completion certificate. These courses work. Okay, they give you a much stronger foothold in what you're supposed to deploy, and they may steer you away or towards certain Citrix products. You may be sitting in the 7 class and go, you know what, we are really, really just Zen app. I don't know what's happening with the 7.5 thing yet. We're going to stay on 6.5. I don't see why we're going to upgrade to 7 just to give ourselves more headaches. Okay, these courses may make it easier than you investing 40, 50, 60, 70, 100 grand in the new deployment, bringing GTC out, letting them set it up all for you. They hand you the keys. It runs great. Then you realize... I like the car I traded in better. Got better use out of that one. And you get the education, so if your company does decide to go to it in a couple of years, you're ready. So what questions do we have on what Citrix can do for you? Three certifications for the Zen Desktop 7 piece. OK, they have the professional. They have the enterprise and they have the advanced. You take the intro 207 course, that's geared to get you ready for the advanced. You need to take each test in order. Got to take one to take two, got to take one and two to take three to get your full Citrix certified professional um, certification. All the other certifications, are they still valid? Citrix is still dealing with this. That is supposed to, yes. And again, they're still dealing with weighing this because this is still newish especially with now the 7.5 product coming out, it not being part of this, because you are a Citrix certified professional for apps and desktops, because it's one product. So are, is your 6.5 cert still very valid? Oh, gosh, yes, because that's still out there. Is your 5.0 cert valid? Yes. Is your 1.8 cert valid? Hmm, probably not. Um, but the certification path has changed to the big three, at least for now. All the other tests still give you um, your CCA, Citrix certified administrator. You sit the 6.5 exam, you have a CCA cert. What is that worth? Don't know right now, because that stuff is all in flux. Are they going to incorporate that and change everything? Maybe, but they also might just keep the structure the way it is, and hopefully let it just kind of grow up. Good question. If you are interested in seeing the class schedule, I know GTC handed out a sheet, but um, I'm sorry I did it. There's a phone number of somebody here who might not like the fact that I copied it from email and put it up here. The lovely lady in the back, Mary, this is her number. It goes right to her pink iPhone that is sitting somewhere. And if she is not busy texting her friend, she will answer it. No, I'm kidding. Um, she's a great one to call and see what the GTC course offerings are and let you know. If you know you have this week and you can take this class and it's three months, GTC will work with you. We'll see what we can schedule and find a solution that works best for everybody. Okay? Hey, guys, free lunch, free breakfast, five days in a row. And you can still do lunch and learn, as these two are. Any questions? OK, we have a magic basket. We couldn't find a bigger one, apparently. Could you, could you pick? I'm making you do it. That's just rude. Now, somebody gets it just like me. Um, do we understand what this is for? This is for $1,500 in cash that Mary has promised you. No. It's for, <laughs> she's like, really? Um, Whose ever name this is, you now own $1,500 worth of training with GTC to redeem towards a Citrix course. So, Jesse Wilson, oh my gosh, that's so crazy. I wish my name was John, because that would be who won it. Um, hey, hey, after class, I want my cut, okay? So, that's a good one. Thank you very much um, for giving up your time to be here and listen. And please, um, you can see we've got one, two, three, four GTC reps in this room, five GTC reps here sitting here learning about this stuff. Please call and ask. There's plenty of food left. Um, if it's not there, it's under the desk up front where Mary hides it. Um, <laughs> I know. I, not just you, Tony. I'm picking everybody. But thank you guys again very much. And let's keep as everything. Um, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Good job. Thank you, sir. Good job.